QuickBooks Online 2023 Progress Invoicing Example Number 2 Calculate and Enter Estimate Get ready to earn the skills needed to boost your bank books on up with QuickBooks Online. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our QuickBooks test company file. We started up in a prior presentation. Remember that we are in the accounting view as opposed to the business view. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top, switch the view down below. We're going to duplicate some tabs to put reports in like we do every time. Right click the tab up top to duplicate it. As that's thinking, right click again, duplicate the tab again, back to the tab to the middle, reports on the left hand side opening up the balance sheet which is in the favorites changing the name or the the range 010125 to 123125 i would like to see this one by class even though we only have one class that we worked on in a prior presentation we turned on class tracking in a prior presentation and that gives us this breakout not too much detail from the balance sheet side although it might give us more detail in this practice problem on the balance sheet side next tab i'm going to open up the reports this time the profit and loss report and this time i'm just going to open it for the last few months from 07 0125 to 123125 and run that by month so we can see what the last practice problem did and then i'll run that and there's our our income statement um, by month of, of transactions. And we have this issue with the timing not exactly lining up on like a percentage of completion type uh, of system. And that's what we want to be thinking about this time. So what we're going to do this time is we'll create basically a, a system where we'll try to line that up. Let's first enter the estimate again. So I'm going to go into uh, Excel and kind of think about how we might put this together from an estimate if we're putting a project together and then we'll go through a similar kind of process to, to tie all this together. So in an Excel worksheet, I'm going to format the Excel sheet by clicking here. Now, by the way, if you have this, this sheet, then it'll have an example tab, a practice tab and a blank tab to help you work through it. And we'll just build it on the blank tab. If you don't have it, that's okay because we'll just build it from the blank tab anyways. So I'm going to right click on this tab and we will uh, format the cells. I'm gonna make it currency, bracketed, and then I'm gonna say no decimals. That's usually my starting point on the formatting. And then let's, let's say we're gonna make our estimate. So uh, job, let's say this is job two estimate that we might actually do in Excel. We might do this estimate in Excel so that we can then populate it into say QuickBooks, right? So I'm gonna say, all right, let's then say that we went through our estimate if it was a complex type of estimate, but we'll simplify it here and just say that our three buckets of, of expenses are usually gonna be materials and then the labor and then the overhead. So let's say that of those of those items, we think it's going to be forty thousand uh, for the materials, labor. Let's say it's thirty thousand that we think is going to be labor, and then the overhead. Let's say we think is going to be nine twenty three or something like that. When we put our estimate together, if I sum this up, we're going to get to seventy six. Let's say let's say this one, this one's actually going to be six thousand. 6,923, which sums up to 76,923. So that'll be our total cost. And then we're gonna have the markup. 
that I'm gonna say is a 30% markup. So whatever the cost is, we're gonna mark it up 30%. This is a general convention. You could, I mean, again, it would depend on what your billing structure is, but this is the, the concept that I'm gonna be using here. So we'll mark it up 30%. And so we're gonna say, this will be the markup percent. And then this will be the mar markup, markup amount which will be equal to the 76 uh, 923 times 30%. So now I'm going to say the total uh, charge estimate estimate is going to be equal to the cost plus the markup, which would be 100,000, which we're trying to get to that nice even 100,000. So that's going to be our kind of baseline starting numbers. I'm going to make this bracketed and and so and this is going to be the bottom line now once we have that estimate we might tell the client hey look we're going to bill you based on this estimate so we might then say okay our billing structure i'm going to make this a skinny column will look something like this the billing schedule for this job is going to be i'll make this black and white is going to be i'll say month one uh, and then month uh, two, month three, month four, and month five. And I'm just gonna, I'm just making up the billing structure. And like, how would we make up the billing structure? We'd probably tie it to the materials we need if it was a construction type of contract. But, and we might have our first amount that I'm gonna charge is just gonna, I'm just gonna say 10,000 because I'm gonna assume we need 10,000 down to buy the stuff we need to start with this more longer term project. In month two, I'm gonna say, we're not gonna bill in month month two because that's when we'll start the project possibly, but we actually got the deposit in month one. So we got kind of like a prepayment of it. And then in month three, I'm just gonna make up a billing structure of 25,000, 30,000 in month four, 35,000 in month five for a total of, 100,000. So notice that this billing structure doesn't tie out exactly to my my process of the job because I haven't started it. I don't know I don't know how much it's going to take and I know the 10,000 up front I want before I start the job to lock in the client as well as to get the materials that I need to start even though I haven't worked on anything. And that's where of course we get in this difference between the the revenue recognition and the billing that's going to be taking uh, place. Now, when we come up with a billing schedule, note that you might have a hard billing schedule in a company. You might say, hey, look, I, I we shook hands and I want to make it. I don't want you to think that I'm messing up doing anything funny on the billing schedule. So I'm going to I'm going to be tied to the billing schedule, even if my costs differ as I go, because that's how I do things. Or you might say, hey, look, this is just an estimate. This is usually in a construction for government projects or something. We're like, ah, it's an estimate. It's probably low. No, it's not low, but then it'll be way low, right? Because then the estimates will go up and it's like, oh, whoops, it cost $500,000 or something. And we had to increase the billing rate, right? You might have a flexible, a flexible billing rate. But for our purposes, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to make it a fixed billing amount here and say we're, we're locked into the billing for what it is, even though our estimates uh, could, could we don't know what's actually gonna happen as the job goes forward in terms of our actual costs until we actually incur the costs, all right? So at, at this point in time, we can make the estimate and then we'll collect that month one amount. So let's go ahead and go over here and I'm gonna go to, this is our second project. So I'm gonna make a new project. I'll say, just call it project number two now. So I'm just going to say project two, generic project number two. I'm going to say new project, project, project number two. It's going to be not tied to, it could be tied to the same customer, but I'm going to say it's tied to customer two, right? Customer two, new project. And I'm, this is going to happen actually at the beginning of 2025. So I'm going to say an 010125 is the start date. It's in progress. Okay. So now we have a, a new pro, new project number two in place. 
We're gonna make an estimate for that project. So I'll hit the drop down. We'll make an estimate. And I'm gonna say that's for project number two. And we're gonna say then this happens start. I'm just gonna start at the beginning of the year this time, 010125. And we'll make our little estimate down below, same way that we did before with the generic categories of materials, labor, and overhead. Now in practice, obviously you might have a whole different kinds of material and you know labor might go through payroll or contractors, however you're gonna account for that and overhead and whatnot, but they would all be categorized into generally these categories of material, labor, and overhead, usually when you're making something, right? So materials, I'm just gonna give the generic category of materials according to our estimate was 40,000. So I'll say 40,000. And I'm gonna make a new class, which is kind of redundant because we already have the project, but we know that the classes will break out at least the income statement by column, which is quite useful. And in this case, it might give us some more detail on the balance sheet side too. So I'm gonna say class, class number two or job two. So, so I can indicate, I wanna be able to indicate that this is different than the project thing that we're using in terms of tools. That's why I'm trying to name it a little bit differently. So then we're gonna say, this is gonna be next labor. And that we said was for 30,000. All right, 30,000. And I'm gonna say this is class number two. And then we've got overhead. And this is gonna be for, we're gonna say, uh, we're gonna say the overhead is 6923, all right? 6923. And that's gonna be for class number two. And then I'm gonna put the markup in a separate line item so that the client can see the actual costs and the markup. The other way you could do it is to mark up each of the line items by like the 30% markup. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna make up another item here, which I'm just gonna call the markup. So I'm gonna say it could be a non-inventory or a service item, because we're not gonna be tracking inventory. I'll just say service. I'm just gonna call it the markup. And so we'll copy that and we'll put it down here on the description. It's gonna be going once again to the sales of product because we are gonna be making something here and we'll say save it and close it. So there is it and that's gonna be our other, what did we say, 2377. So we'll say, okay, that's gonna be uh, 23077. So that should add up to the 100,000 total and this is gonna be job number two. So there we have it. So we'll record the estimate. The estimate's not gonna do anything to the actual financial statements. It's just going to uh, uh, give the estimate that we could provide, of course, to the client and then go from that point if they accept the estimate. So we're gonna say save and close. And then we can track the estimate over in the sales tab by going to the estimates or to the customers customer number two, and there's gonna be our estimate for the second project. What we expect to be happening from this point forward is that we can use that estimate to basically create invoices uh, as we go into the future. Now, nothing has been recorded to the financial statements yet. We have the same familiar problem over here that we saw last time in that we're gonna start billing the 10,000 before we did any work on it. And that means that uh, the billing could be used with an invoice, which would be great. That's what we did last time because that facilitates the collection process easier, most likely, but it causes that revenue recognition issue because we haven't actually done the work to earn the 10,000. So then we'll deal with a couple different options. We might deal with that problem with next time.